that may not be intuitive that you're giving antibodies to somebody with antibody mediated rejection. If someone has BK viremia, we can use IVIG to sort of neutralize the BK that's in their circulation. And plasma exchange is a process by which we literally just take out someone's plasma and dump it. We're taking out all of their antibodies, not just the antibody that was causing the rejection. Hello, Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, where we're gonna be answering the question, why is your transplant patient on IVIG? So this was a question I got asked recently and actually understanding the reason for that IVIG can really help in your discussions and how you synthesize and bring things together. So I wanted to talk about the four reasons that your transplant patient might be receiving IVIG, meaning intravenous immunoglobulin. This is a blood product that comes from blood donors it's just a real collection of antibodies from the general population. So a big collection of antibodies with immunity to lots of different things. And we use it in the transplant space for a lot of different reasons. So the first reason could be hypogammaglobulinemia. Patients who've been on immunosuppressants for a long time kind of stuffs up their immune system and they can just have an overall increased risk of infections and they're not making as many antibodies as they could be just because of that long-term immunosuppressant risk. So if we have a transplant patient who's got low immunoglobulins and they're having trouble with infections, we might give them IVIG just to boost their immune system generally. Another scenario is when we're handling specific infections and one that comes to mind is BK nephropathy. So BK virus is a little polyomavirus that loves to live inside our urothelium, inside our urinary tract. And Kidney transplants are particularly vulnerable to this if we use too much immunosuppression. There's no real treatment for BK nephropathy. We really just have to reduce the immunosuppression and allow the immune system in there to tackle the virus. But if someone has BK viremia alongside that BK nephropathy, which they usually do, we can use IVIG to sort of neutralize the BK that's in their circulation. So the IVIG is going to give you antibodies against the BK virus, which are going to help reduce the viral load in the bloodstream. It's not going to help what's happening inside the kidney, but sometimes we use that as an adjunct therapy when someone has BK nephropathy. And another reason you might see IVIG in your transplant patient is antibody mediated rejection. So that might not be intuitive that you're giving antibodies to somebody with antibody mediated rejection. And to be honest, we don't really know how it works, but there are some theories out there. We think that by giving the body a lot of antibodies, it sort of gives a negative feedback cycle to the, to the immune system to say, listen, we've got a lot of antibodies, you don't need to make any more, thanks very much, and kind of switching off that antibody production. So we think it helps in that way. But the other thing is that someone who has had antibody mediated rejection, they often have plasma exchange. And plasma exchange is a process by which we literally just take out someone's plasma and dump it and give them another solution instead of plasma, either fresh frozen plasma or more commonly just albumin. We're taking out all of their antibodies, not just the antibody that was causing the rejection. So you'll see patients who've had plasma exchange, they'll get like little baby doses of IVIG alongside that plasma exchange, but they'll also often get a bigger dose of IVIG, which helps replenish um, immunoglobulins, but also helps to combat the rejection process itself. And the last reason you might see a transplant patient on IVIG is when we need to reduce their immunosuppression for a particular reason, but we're worried about rejection. So we might give IVIG in order to reduce their tacrolimus, for example. And reasons for reducing their immunosuppression might be due to infections or malignancy or something like that, where you want to take that immunosuppression down whilst you get on top of things. But also, another scenario I see this in is if someone's got an acute kidney injury and they're on uh, tacrolimus or cyclosporin, for example, and they are nephrotoxic. So sometimes we give the kidney a little break from the calcineurin inhibitor, and in order to do that, we use IVIG as a temporizing measure. So sometimes we do that quite early after the transplant, sometimes we do it a bit later, but those would be the four reasons I can think of that your transplant patient could be having IVIG. So you wanna ask about infections, you want to ask about rejection and you want to ask about any reasons that they would have any calcineurin inhibitor sparing. So those were all of the causes I can think of that you could be on IVIG as a transplant patient. I hope this helped your studies. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye!